Thanks, Spence. Um, I just uh, I just ran into a uh, player outside before, and he said he saw th two things he'd never so th thought he'd ever see. Uh, the first thing being the coach kick on his left foot, um, and the other one was a coach actually tackling on a bit of vision tonight. So. Um, uh, very, very good work by our IT crew. Um, since I first arrived at the club in 2002, there's been a total of 215 players and their families who have come, either come through or it's still at the Swans. This includes the nine new players that we were fortunate enough to add at the end of last year. Mostly what the public sees and takes notice of are the players' names and specifically what attributes that they can bring to the team. A lot of that chat revolves round. he did a 20 minute sprint under three seconds at the AFL draft camp. Or he broke the record in the 3K time trial. Or his vertical leap was absolutely off the chart. Lucky they didn't have draft combines and I was coming through. And then the chat starts to centre around, I saw him do this or that at training or he'll add to our defence. And you can guarantee there'll be thousands and thousands of best teams picked throughout the country. All of this is fantastic and we as coaches get caught up in this as well. However, when a player's name gets called out on draft night or they sign on with a new club, it's so much more significant than that. This is a moment that changes people's lives. Not just the player, but their partners, their families and their friends who all embark on this journey together. And yes, this journey centres a lot around the roller coaster ride that playing AFL football pro provides. But it also signals a time of wonderful new experiences for the player themselves and everyone in their extended networks. It also opens up new experiences and friendships for the players already at our club. After our list was finalised and I looked at the origins of where our new players came from, it just got me thinking. What would it look like if some of our current players or staff wanted to find even more about where the new lads came from? And being from the bush, my solution was I put down an itinerary for a good old fashioned road trip. My mock road trip advice to the players would go something along these lines. First, go up and hire yourself one of those new Volkswagen Tourags. Yeah, I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying. You want to be just like the coach and enjoy the extra seats that the multivan provides. <laughs> but too bad. When you key in the addresses that you're travelling to and see it come up on the huge 15-inch screen, it's just too much to ignore. It's also going to be a bloody long road trip. Better not let Dane Rampey organise the playlist. And if Justin McInerney's driving, well, he's just got his licence. So I'm pretty glad the car's insured through QBE. <laughs> OK, off you go, boys. Head down the Hume Highway towards your first stop about 10 hours down the road. And as you get closer to Mildura, where Dylan Stevens and Brady Rails grew up, I'm sure that you're all getting a little bit hungry. Everyone would be licking their lips at grabbing a burger at the Haddo Outback Roadhouse cooked by Robert and Ollie Stevens. Make sure you add pineapple and egg, I've heard that's their specialty. And as you're staying the night, you might want to grab the old truckie's favourite, which is the good old fashioned long neck. Before you leave for Adelaide in the morning, jump in the water for a swim. There has to be a swimming hole there with special powers that help make Brady Rouse so bloody quick. Oh, uh, now we're off to Adelaide. We've got a good strong group from this neck of the woods and that includes our CEO and our chairman. You should pop over to GG Tyres in Royal Park Leanne and Glenn, Glenn Gray will whack on a new set of 20-inch Tourag car, uh, wheels for that Tourag. And Glenn said today he's promised me a brand new set for nothing. He doesn't think I'll drive to Adelaide for it. He's got another thing coming. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're loving the drive heading across uh, the Nullarbor is just to Perth is just a little bit too far. Well, we'll get off to the airport and onto the plane. I know that you're glad to be going to Perth. For starters, you can all call in to see Anita Warner for a haircut or ask Travis how did Chad manage to stay up in those trees as an arborist without falling off before he got to the swans. Now it's time for golf. Phil Taylor will take you all on the, in the longest drive competition. You'd better off be on your game. He can hit it an absolute mile. 
Time to get on the plane back to Adelaide, pick up the Turag and head across to Berry. This is where Caden Brand grew up. And while it's tempting looking out onto the Murray and seeing those boats skiing up and down the river, best not to go wakeboarding. It can mean trouble for footballers' shoulders. Now it's time for a bit of genuine country. Slip over to Lucendale, jump in the Amarok Ute and go for a cruise around the paddocks to check out the Merino sheep at Jane and Richard Gould's farm. After lunch, enjoy a hot apple pie dessert made from their homegrown apples. Doesn't that sound nice? When you head out the farm gate, point the car in the direction of Mortlake. You might want to pick up a whippet dog, the same as the two that Louis Taylor has at his place. No, ah, no, actually on second thoughts, no, I don't want to climb on the leather seats in the Turag. OK, time to head back up the Hume Highway. Drop the Turag back and then duck over to the International Airport. That Qatar flight to Ireland is about to depart. Their business class has been voted best in the world. Hopefully they have size 15 slippers for Sam Naismith. <laughs> Not to mention a nice set of pyjamas. Trying to find a local pub that serves Guinness Draft, and I know what you're saying, I know it's very, very difficult to find that in Ireland. Here the locals recall stories of Barry O'Connor's dad, George, who was an all-island hur hurling champion of that country. George is also a highly regarded coach. Get some tips of about coaching from him so that you can pass them on to the bloke back in Sydney with a whistle. Hopefully you can learn a thing or two. When you get on that plane again to come home, make sure that you don't have too many pints of Guinness. Our dietitian Elise is waiting at home with her calipers ready for that skinfold test. As you step back off in the plane in Sydney, turn off the aeroplane mode on your phone ASAP. Log on to realestate.com.au. Your travels have reminded you to buy a place in the most beautiful city in the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we had a bit of fun with that. But every one of these young men here tonight, um, they can seriously play. But it's also a lot more than, than just what they do on a football field. It's also about where they've come from, all their extended networks and the journey that comes along with them. I was really fortunate that my family to this day are still very good friends with the blokes I played footy with. It's one of the great things that football brings and sport brings. It's one of the great things we're fortunate to be in Sydney because we've got a lot of blokes from outside of Sydney that can go and visit those places that I just mentioned and have a, have a really good time, get a really good strong connection. And when we get a really strong connection, as Nick Smith mentioned before, anything can happen. They're also, they're not just footballers, they're sons, brothers, nephews, friends, partners, and their own network of people. We welcome their family to the Sydney Swans family. We're excited what this group before you tonight can deliver. We know, yeah, we know we have a lot of work to do, but we can't wait to get started. What was it? 24 days. Let's get stuck into it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.